consider the animation that is being played on the screen. Now over here you will find that a boy is running with a bag on his shoulders. Now the boy's friend wishes to play a prank on him. What the friend does is he stands in front of the boy and he intercepts the boy's path. So when the boy is running from one end to the other, his friend stands in the path and blocks his way. As you can see that the boy is unable to run when the friend is pushing him in the opposite direction. In other words, the boy is unable to run when his friend is applying a resistance to the boy's running. So a similar thing happens as well in case of charges. When electrons want to flow from one end to the other of a conductor, a certain resistance is offered by the conductor. And we are going to find out what and how this resistance comes into play. Now at first we consider a simple conductor where no potential difference has been applied. So in a conductor, as you might recall from our previous discussions, there is an abundance of free electrons. These electrons, because they are loosely held by the nuclei of the atoms, these electrons are free to roam about throughout the conductor. So they have a random motion and they collide against each other and the walls of the conductor as well as with the positive ions in the conductor. Now what do you think will happen if we apply a potential difference? Because clearly in this case, there is no net flow of current that is taking place. The electrons are moving about completely randomly. So let us say that we apply a particular potential difference. So once a potential difference has been applied, as you saw in the previous cases in the previous lectures, there has to be a flow of current. So the once potential difference is applied, conventional current will flow from higher potential to lower potential. In other words, conventional current will flow from the more positive end to the more negative end. So likewise, the electrons will flow from lower potential, that is the more negative end, to the higher potential, that is the more positive end. So as you remember, conventional current flow and electron flow are in the opposite direction. So as a result of this, when the electrons are flowing from one end to the other of a conductor, they collide with other electrons on their path as well as with the positive ions which are present inside the conductor. And due to this, their drift, that is the drift of the electrons is opposed and a resistance is created. Just like you saw in the case of the boy and his friend, where the running of the boy was opposed or resisted by his friend. So even in the case of electrons, due to their collisions with other electrons and positive ions, an opposition is created, or in other words, a resistance is created. So when we have applied a potential difference, we can find that the electrons are moving from one end to the other and conventional current is flowing in the opposite direction. So if you observe closely, you will find that the electrons in their path are colliding with one another as well as with the atoms or the ions inside the conductor. This is why a resistance inside the conductor is created. Now to illustrate the concept of resistance, we consider a very simple animation. Now in this animation, notice the yellow car in all the three cases. You will find that in the first case, that is on the absolute right, the yellow car is encountering very less amount of traffic. So it is able to pass from one end to the other quite quickly. In the second case, that is in the second road, the yellow car is encountering comparatively more traffic. So it is taking a longer time in going from one end of the road to the other end. Its motion is slower. And if we consider the third case, well, in the third case you will find that there is a huge amount of traffic and the yellow car has to take a substantial amount of time before it can actually pass from one end to the other safely. So what can we say? We can say that the presence of traffic is hindering the motion of the car. So in a similar way, collisions with other electrons as well as with the ions and atoms inside the conductor hinder the path of electrons or current. 
So how can we define resistance in case of current? Resistance can be defined as the obstruction offered to the flow of current. It is important to remember that resistance is the obstruction offered. So the obstruction offered to the flow of current by the conductor is known as the resistance of the conductor. Resistance is measurable quantity and it is measured in ohms. That is, ohm is the unit of resistance and it is denoted by the symbol omega. Now consider this animation. In this animation, two separate cases have been considered. On the right hand side, you can see a four lane highway and on the left hand side, you can see a single lane highway. Now if you look closely, you will find that in the four lane highway, the cars are traveling quite fast. That is, traffic flow is very smooth and the cars are moving from one end of the road to the other quite simply without any sort of hindrance or obstruction. Now if we consider the cars in the single lane highway and if we consider a similar or a close number of cars, you will find that it is comparatively more difficult for the cars to move from one end to the other. Why? Because in the case of four lane highway, the road or the highway is much wider than in the case of the single lane highway. So in a similar manner, we can relate resistance to the width of the conductor. So we can say that resistance, just like we saw in the case of resistance by traffic, resistance in a conductor also depends on the thickness or the area of cross section of the wire. The area of cross section is the area that you can see in a conductor if you look at it from the front. So in this case, the shaded area, that is the area in red, is known as the area of cross section of the wire. So more the area of cross section of the wire, more electrons will flow and less the area of cross section of the wire, less electrons will flow. More area of cross section means more thickness, less area of cross section means less thickness. So we can say that as area of cross section increases, the resistance decreases because the electrons get a wider area to flow through. Just like in the case of the four lane highway where the cars got more area to move from one end to the other. And when area of cross section decreases, the resistance increases along with it. Why? Because the electrons get lesser area to flow through, that is lesser thickness. Just like we saw in the case of the cars and the single lane highway. Now consider another animation. Over here you will find that there are two roads of varying lengths. Now consider the motion of the yellow car. When the yellow car travels along the shorter road, you will find that it encounters a lesser number of obstacles or a lesser number of cars. So it is able to travel relatively smoothly or it is able to travel from one end to the other quite fast. Now if we consider a longer road, the obstructions offered to the path of the yellow car is more. Why? Because there is more traffic on the longer road. So if the yellow car has to travel from one end of the road to the other end of the road, it takes significantly more time than that in the first case. So a similar thing happens in the case of charges and resistance of the conductor as well. When a charge has to flow through a short conductor and a long conductor, the resistances offered are different. So we can say that resistance of a conductor depends on the length of it or the length of the wire that is the conductor. So we can say that when we consider a short length, more electrons will flow because the hindrances or the obstructions offered to the path of the electrons will be less because they will collide less with each other and with the atoms and ions if they have to travel a less length or a shorter length. Now if the length of the conductor is more, less electrons will be flowing. Why? Because since in that case the obstructions and the collisions will increase, lesser electrons will flow because they have to travel a longer distance which means more number of collisions. So what can we say? We can say that when length increases, resistance increases along with it because it involves more number of collisions. 
and when length decreases the resistance also decreases along with it because it means lesser number of collisions so thus we found out two relations as far as resistance is concerned its relation with the length l and its relation with the thickness or the area of cross section a what did we find out we found that resistance increases with an increase in length and resistance decreases with an increase in thickness or area of cross section so what can we say we can say that resistance is directly proportional to length and resistance is inversely proportional to the area of cross section a thus these are the two relations that we get for resistance r directly proportional to l and r inversely proportional to a so thus we can say by combining the two relations that r is directly proportional to l upon a as you can see a is in the denominator which means that if the area of cross section is increased resistance will decrease and since l is in the numerator we can see that if l is increased then the resistance will increase and if l is decreased the resistance will decrease so from this relation we have to arrive at a relation for equality how can we do so we write resistance equals l by a times rho this rho is known as resistivity rho is a quantity that is known as resistivity and in this case it is also the constant of proportionality in this equation so if we rearrange the equation we will find that we get rho as r times a divided by l or in other words resistance times area of cross section divided by length of the conductor so now if we consider a wire that has unit area of cross section and it has unit length a wire which has unit area of cross section and unit length what will be the resistivity for such a wire in such a case the resistivity of the wire will be equal to the resistance of the wire this is also why resistivity is known as specific resistance thus we can say that if l is equal to 1 and a is equal to 1 we get rho is equal to r so now how can we define the resistivity of a material the resistivity is defined as the resistance offered by a wire of unit length as we considered and unit area of cross section so resistivity is nothing but the resistance that the wire offers when it is of unit length and unit area of cross section and it is also known as specific resistance of the material it varies from material to material that is the specific resistance or the resistivity is different for different materials however for a given material it is constant or the same that is resistivity is a characteristic of a particular material so now we have found out how resistance is influenced by the length and area of conductor now what happens if we heat this conductor through which current is already flowing you will find that the to and fro motion of the atoms increases due to heating of the conductor as a result they collide with the electrons more this also implies that the to and fro motion of the electrons will increase as well so when the conductor is being heated due to an increase in vibration of the particles inside the number of collisions is more so the resistance offered to the path of electrons increases thus the resistance of the conductor increases on heating now for metallic alloys it has been found out that there is no change or very little change in resistance when the temperature is increased and this property of metallic alloys is employed and this is why resistors and resistance boxes use conductors that are made up of alloys because they have little or no change in resistance with increase in temperature 
Now there are a certain other class of materials which are known as superconductors. So what are superconductors? Superconductors are materials which offer zero resistance to the flow of current at extremely low temperatures and these are known as superconductors. So these extremely low temperatures are obtainable at around minus 100 to minus 150 degrees Celsius. At these extremely low temperatures, we obtain superconductors. So an example of superconductor is mercury. So you will be interested to learn that scientists are actually working and researching on how to obtain superconductors at normal or room temperature. Because these extremely low temperatures, as I mentioned, around minus 100 to minus 150 degrees Celsius, they are not normally obtainable and are definitely not favorable. So if these superconductors can be obtained at room temperature, the size of many appliances can be greatly reduced. Because as you can see, superconductors offer almost none or zero resistance to the flow of current. So thus we found out about resistance, which is an important concept in case of conductors. Resistance is basically the obstruction that the conduction conductor offers to the path of electrons. In other words, the resistance of the conductor is nothing but the hindrance offered to the flow of electrons. We found that resistance is measured in ohms. Resistance depends on certain things, certain quantities like the length of the conductor and the area of cross section of the conductor. We found that resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the area of cross section of the conductor. We also learned about a new term called resistivity, which was the specific resistance of a conductor. We also learned that resistivity is a characteristic of a given material, but it varies from material to material.